Welcome to Military Analytics. The Ukrainian war brings to light the rifts between the Russian army and the Kremlin administration. This war on the territory of Eastern Europe is exposing the rifts between the Russian army and the Kremlin administration. It is burying Vladimir Putin's senior officials in the dusty pages of history. Since the beginning of the war, Russian leader Vladimir Putin has dismissed key generals without hesitation. This trend, which started last March with the dismissal of eight generals due to Poe intelligence and the wrong strategy, continues in 2023. High-ranking figures such as Dmitry Bulgakov, General Muratov, and General Mikhail Mezaintsov are among the commanders that Vladimir Putin has recently discredited. Let's get to know the commanders that Mr. Putin has dismissed in recent days. The Russian army has replaced its highest-ranking general in charge of logistics ahead of an anticipated counterattack by Kiev. The dismissal of Colonel General Mikhail Mezaintsov comes after Russia's offensive in eastern Ukraine faltered due to ongoing problems with ammunition supplies. Mezaintsov was nicknamed the Butcher of Mariupol by the Ukrainian authorities due to the general's role in the attack. This naming was approved by the UK government. Western analysts have questioned whether he was responsible for the city's destruction, including attacks on a maternity hospital, as he was the head of the National Defense Administration Center in Moscow at the time. The Russian Defense Ministry did not comment. However, influential Russian military bloggers criticized his dismissal. So, who is Colonel Mikhail Mezaintsov? Colonel Mezaintsov, 60, was promoted to Deputy Defense Minister in September and became responsible for logistics. Mezaintsov replaced General Dmitry Bulgakov, who was dismissed due to supply line malfunctions during the initial invasion of Ukraine. With his white hair and icy pale blue eyes, Colonel Mezaintsov is one of the few Russian army generals with any profile in the West. Allegedly, Mezaintsov oversaw Russia's brutal bombardment of Aleppo during the Syrian civil war. The National Defense Headquarters, which Colonel Mezaintsov directed until September 20, 2022, coordinates the Russian army's response to the events. The National Defense Headquarters houses a supercomputer designed to predict the outcome of conflicts and the development of rival armies. Russian soldiers fighting in the vicinity of Bakhmut in Ukraine's Donbass region complained that their artillery supply was running low. Soldiers mobilized into the Russian army stated that their equipment was substandard. Mezaintsov was blamed for the logistical inadequacy of the soldiers. Vladimir Putin dismissed Mezaintsov. So far, no official reason has been given for the dismissal of Colonel Mezaintsov. However, some analysts suggest that the colonel's dissatisfaction with his job was the reason for leaving. It is known that the Russian Ministry of Defense is one of the key departments responsible for ensuring the national defense and security of the country. The departure of Mikhail Mezaintsov from his post may affect the work of the ministry as a whole and the implementation of state defense orders. Possible changes could undermine the coordination of logistics, processes, and interaction between Department of Defense units. The current resignation may not be the only one, according to a number of Russian military experts. On the other hand, the chaos in the Russian army has been going on for a long time. The reason for this chaos is a series of humiliating defeats on the front lines. Vladimir Putin is used to blaming these defeats on top commanders from the first day of the war. The Russian leader never admitted that he made the wrong strategic moves. Vladimir Putin blamed his own mistakes on the generals. This situation of senior Russian commanders could be summed up as scapegoats. One of these scapegoats is Admiral Sarjai Avakins, the commander of Russia's Pacific Fleet, who was dismissed a week after the surprise inspection. The change was announced a week after the Pacific Fleet was ordered to conduct surprise combat exercises to repel a theoretical enemy landing. A senior Navy commander refused to send any more of his men to the war in Ukraine. Thereupon, it was claimed that the admiral was fired by Vladimir Putin. Admiral Sarjai Avakins, 66, was the commander of Russia's Pacific Fleet before his sudden dismissal from his post last week. Russia's Pacific Fleet, stationed in the port of Vladivostok, did not comment on the reshuffle. Avakins was appointed commander of Russia's Pacific Fleet in May 2012. He was awarded the rank of military admiral on December 13, 2014. Avakins was awarded medals for his service in the Russian army. When Avakins received marching orders from the Kremlin, he was participating in war games involving nuclear bombers. But a defense ministry source insisted that the admiral had decided to retire after a long and distinguished career. 
the source tried to downplay the significance of the admiral's dismissal. Putin's envoy, Yuri Tretnev, stated that 65-year-old Admiral Sarjai Avakins was appointed head of a group responsible for military sports education and patriotic education. In short, the chaos in the Russian army is trying to be solved by dismissing high-level officials. These ruptures in the army are wearing down Vladimir Putin a lot, while Putin can't even find a solution to the problems within the army. He is left with bigger issues. Are the explosions on the Kremlin preparing the end of the Russian leader? The explosions took place in the dome of Sandansky Dvoretz in the Kremlin. Video footage released on social media platforms showed that two explosions occurred over the Kremlin 15 minutes apart earlier today. The video shows a drone approaching the dome and then exploding in a fireball, lighting up the sky. It seems that this drone did not hit the dome itself. However, it exploded very close to the dome, causing burning debris to fall. Photos from another video show two drone strikes one at 2.17 am, and the other at 2.43. Moscow residents noted that the sound of the explosion could be heard from the opposite side of the Moscow River. According to the Yakima main telegram channel, at the same time, these explosions ignited the blame duel between Russia and Ukraine. Russia claimed that the Ukrainian government carried out a drone strike. The Kremlin described it as a deliberate attempt to attack President Vladimir Putin's residence which was blocked by Russian electronic warfare systems. Russia did not publish any evidence that Ukraine was behind the explosions. Ukraine claimed that Russia fabricated the incident to divert attention from Ukraine's impending counterattack. The Kiev administration denied any intervention. An attack on the heart of Moscow represents a bold move by Kiev that has the potential to have serious repercussions. U.S. intelligence agencies were still trying to determine what had happened. According to two American officials briefed on the situation, U.S. officials have expressed concerns in the past about Ukrainian attacks on Russian soil. Officials were concerned that these attacks might provoke Moscow without a direct impact on the battlefield. It was also clear that whatever the source of the explosions, the Kremlin made a deliberate choice to publicize the event. About 12 hours after the explosions, Mr. Putin's press service released Store Air 5 paragraph statement. In the statement, it was claimed that the Kiev regime was trying to kill the president by using drones. Mr. Putin's spokesman said the president was not in the Kremlin when the blast occurred around 2.30 UM. Moscow time. If the explosions were truly a drone strike, penetrating the air defenses in central Moscow would have represented the last embarrassing failure of the Russian military. In any case, the incident could be a pretext for Mr. Putin to launch new attacks on Ukraine as happened in the aftermath of Russia's fiery attack on the Crimean Bridge last October. Ukraine maintained a policy of largely deliberate uncertainty over whether it played a role in the attacks inside Russia. In recent explosions, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has directly denied responsibility. It seems that as long as the Ukrainian war continues, chaos will increase both in the Russian army and within the Kremlin administration. We will wait and see how Vladimir Putin will intervene in this chaos. Russia's using all its military resources on Ukrainian territory, but so far it has not achieved any significant success. This is due to many reasons. Western aid sent to the Ukrainian army, the foreignness of the Russian troops to the front, and the ambition of the Russian leader Vladimir Putin are some of the reasons. But the most important reason is the socio-psychological destruction within the Russian army. The Russians pushed this collapse too far into the background and tried to restore the morale of their soldiers with untrue facts. Motivation and morale in the Russian army consisted of no support, lack of faith, and completely empty promises. This led to inconceivable losses in the Russian army. Russian military losses deeply affected the personnel, senior officers, and generals of Putin's army. During the Russian invasion of Ukraine, many Russian generals were eliminated. The latest losses of senior commanders occurred in the occupied Khrushchevka direction of the Bakhmut region. Here, the senior commanders of the Second Corps, the 4th Separate Motor Rifle Brigade, which was of great importance for the Russian army in this region, were present. The special forces of the 24th Separate Assault Battalion of the Ukrainian army and the Azov Regiment successfully attacked the Russian positions. This offensive was led by Major Rodion Kudryasov, deputy commander of the Azov Regiment, also known as Ukraine's 3rd Assault Brigade. During the clashes in Kaliska, 
two senior generals of the 4th Separate Motor Rifle Brigade of the 2nd Corps of the Russian Army were eliminated. Dot in addition, about 20 Russian soldiers, including a deputy of the Chief of Staff of the 4th Separate Motor Rifle Brigade of the Russian Army's 2nd Corps, were killed. Let's take a look at the striking operational details of this unique Ukrainian offensive. Russian generals and commanders on the Shuka front were quite close to the clash arenas, and even the Russian front commanders were in opposition to be targeted, even in the operational area. The target of the Azov and Adar battalions was Russian senior generals and commanders from the second cur of the Russian army. The environment of the clash arena was actually quite suitable for this, because the Ukrainians launched an incredible attack, and the Russian trenches became quite complicated. The extent of the attack was revealed much more clearly with the shared video footage. During the clash, Ukrainian soldiers destroyed a Russian tank that came to the aid of Russian forces. It was from this moment that the Russian commanders on this front line began to be quite worried. According to analysts who analyzed the maps, the battle took place between the settlements of Ivanovskaya and Shuka. This critical area was very close to the senior commanders of the 2nd Corps' 4th Separate Motor Rifle Brigade. The settlement of Chuka was lost by Ukrainian forces in January of this year. Dot the fact that such a clash took place in the region seriously surprised the Russians. However, Klisarik is located 5 kilometers south of Bakhmut. The village covers the approaches to both the city and the route from Konstantinovka, which fed the Ukrainian garrison. For this reason, it was actually expected in a way that the Ukrainian forces carried out offensive operations in Alexievka. However, Rather than the severity of this attack, or whether it was an expected situation, a very different factor came to the fore. Finally, it was expected, and during the clashes in Shuka, two senior generals of the 4th Separate Motor Rifle Brigade of the 2nd Corps of the Russian Army were eliminated. The elimination of the 2nd Corps unit by the brigade commander and chief of staff of Ukraine caused a shockwave and psychological collapse among the Russian troops. You know that if your commander dies, you will be helpless and leaderless in critical matters such as the next move and defensive steps. The Russian troops in Shuku experienced the same situation. The Russians initially did not believe the news of the killing of two top Russian generals on the front lines in the city. However, Major Rodion Kudryasov, deputy commander of the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the Azov Regiment, confirmed the news of the killing of two Russian senior commanders. Also, according to the Ukrainian commander, about 20 Russian soldiers were eliminated, including a deputy chief of staff of the 4th Separate Motor Rifle Brigade of the 2nd Corps. Ukrainian officer Anatoly Typhon is another name who confirmed the existence of such an operation and the killing of two high-ranking Russian commanders, while this stunning news spread in waves on the front lines. The eliminated Russian generals were the commanders of the 2nd Corps in Kaliska. In other words, these losses were recorded as major wounds received by the Russian army in the field of war strategies. According to Ukrainian sources, the total loss of generals of the Russian army increased to 23 after the killing of two Russian generals in Kishka. European sources, on the other hand, share values close to the figures reported by Ukrainians. Although the number of Russian general casualties shared by the countries is different, these figures are not small. So why has the Russian army lost so many of its generals and senior commanders since the beginning of the war? UK intelligence attributed the deaths of senior commanders to the fact that they went to the field to personally lead operations, to address difficulties in command and control, and declining Russian performance on the front line. Western governments say that at least 10 Russian generals were killed and attribute this to major strategic mistakes. According to some sources, the reason why so many Russian generals and senior commanders were killed is the war ambitions of Russian leader Vladimir Putin. According to Ukrainian military officials, the reason for these losses is the strategic mistakes of the Russians and the radical and risky moves taken by Putin to achieve victory. Ukrainian official Mikhail Podolyak said his forces had eliminated dozens of colonels and senior officers. Another source shared the exact number of Russian colonels eliminated. The British press reported that a total of 42 Russian colonels were allegedly killed. On the other hand, at the end of April, at least three 17 Russian officers were killed, one-third of them majors, lieutenants, and colonels. So what were the Ukrainians doing to get so many Russian senior military officials out of the war? 
A senior Ukrainian military official said in a statement on the subject that the Ukrainian military intelligence unit was collecting information on the positions of Russian officers, including generals, artillery commanders, and pilots. According to this Ukrainian senior military official, the killed Russian generals and other top commanders were not only from the ground forces group of the Russian army, because among the high-ranking casualties in the Russian army is the deputy commander of the Black Sea Fleet, Captain First Degree Andre Pauly. It was reported that Anton Kapin, the commander of the Russian cruiser Miskva, was also killed, but Russia did not confirm this. In other words, the Ukrainians were conducting finishing operations and achieving sensational successes thanks to accurate and reliable intelligence. Many of the killed Russian generals and senior commanders were taken out of the war, often as a result of sudden raids by the Ukrainians. The Ukrainian army was top-heavy, with generals playing a larger role in the day-to-day -day operations than other armies. However, these losses we mentioned have dragged the Russian army into an irreversible void and leaderlessness. There are also parties that advocate a different factor as the reason for the killing of high-ranking military officials in the Russian army. According to some military analysts, the power constraint is the reason why so many Russian senior officials were killed. Russian battalion commanders were given more powers just three years before the invasion. But after the invasion of Ukraine started, the powers of Russian generals and commanders were limited. Since all critical powers were concentrated in Putin's hands, the Russian commanders in charge of the operation remained much more passive. But let's look at the result together. The Russian army has lost about 200,000 soldiers since the beginning of the war. Do you think this number of casualties shows how President Vladimir Putin's war strategy is? As the war between Russia and Ukraine continues, new developments are taking place as the Russian army is losing its grip on Ukrainian territory day by day. Vladimir Putin has started to try different techniques. Russian spies trying to infiltrate Ukrainian territory through the Belarusian border were detected and captured one by one by the Ukrainian army. Russian troops in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, where the war continues unabated, have been unable to break through the Ukrainian army's defense line for months. The 12-kilometer defense line that Ukrainian forces have put in place in the Luhansk region is causing difficulties for Russian troops. The Russian army, which has had difficulty in the defense line in Luhansk, has lost more than 800 soldiers in the last week. The Kremlin is reacting to the situation. The Kremlin, angered by the failure of the army on the front, is trying to distract the Kyiv administration militarily by organizing airstrikes on the settlements where Ukrainian citizens live. However, these airstrikes were successfully prevented by Ukraine, and loss of life was prevented. Two Russian Su-25 fighter jets took off from Russia's borders on the orders of Valery Gerasimov, Russia's chief of the general staff, to launch airstrikes on the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. The Russian warplanes departed from the city of Kursk, home to one of Russia's largest military air bases, and entered the Ukrainian borders heading towards Kiev. Putin's plan to attack Kiev's energy infrastructure facilities was thwarted by Ukrainian air defense systems, thanks to the Patriot air defense system sent to Ukraine by Ukraine's ally. The United States. The Russian war planes were successfully intercepted due to the constant airstrikes of the Russian army against Kiev. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky deployed air defense systems supplied by the United States on the border with Kiev. The Russian Air Force was unaware of these defenses, although Russian war planes successfully penetrated Ukraine's borders as soon as they attempted to enter Kiev's airspace. The Patriot air defense systems were activated and were able to target the warplanes, seeing the Patriot missiles on the attack. The Russian pilots tried to get away from the area with a quick turn as the missiles got closer and closer. Russian pilots released flares into the air, neutralizing them and making them explode in the air. Thanks to the air defense systems deployed on the border with Kiev, a major attack on Kiev by Russian warplanes was prevented. Then General Gerasimov learned that the Russian Air Force had made an unsuccessful attempt to attack Kiev. He said that they had to eliminate Kiev's air defense systems. Russian commanders stated that they could enter Kiev secretly and neutralize these highly successful air defense systems and that they could create a plan. Gerasimov, thinking that the plan created by the Russian commanders could be a useful plan, formed a special team of 20 people and mobilized a team to eliminate Ukraine's air defense systems. 20 Russian soldiers were specially selected to carry out the special operation and set off as a special forces unit. 
since Kiev is very close to the Belarusian border, it was thought that it would be more possible for these soldiers to enter Ukrainian territory through the Belarusian border. And this special forces unit of 20 soldiers was sent to Belarus. The Belarusian government was informed about Putin's secret operation when the Russian soldiers arrived in Belarus. They were escorted by Belarusian soldiers to the Ukrainian border and dropped off at the Ukrainian border. At this stage of the plan, the Russian spies were planning to infiltrate Ukrainian territory wearing Ukrainian military uniforms. The secret plans of the Russian spies who successfully entered the Ukrainian territory with their military equipment were progressing successfully. But they were caught in the city of Ovrich, not far from the border with Belarus. Ukrainian soldiers in Ovrich directly stopped the Russian spies coming towards them. Ukrainian soldiers who did not realize that the Russian special forces team were spies because they were wearing Ukrainian uniforms did not prevent the Russian spies from leaving. It was only then that the officer of the Ukrainian 57th Tank Battalion realized that these soldiers were not Ukrainian army personnel. The fake uniforms worn by the Russian spies had special insignia of the Ukrainian 57th Tank Battalion on them. The Ukrainian officer nevertheless noticed the incident. The detail that allowed him to notice it was the epitome of perfect vigilance. There were no soldiers of the 57th Tank Battalion in the area at that time because all the soldiers of the 57th Tank Battalion in that region were on duty in Bakhmut. Upon realizing this detail, the plan of the Russian spies was revealed. Realizing that they were caught, the Russian special unit spies started to flee towards the side streets of the city without losing their speed. The Russian spies had in mind to cover their tracks in the side streets of the city. However, once again, things did not go their way. Ukrainian soldiers are stationed in almost every abandoned building in the city and regularly monitor the border with Belarus with the order of the officer of the Ukrainian 57th Tank Battalion. Russian spies aiming to escape through the alleys of the city became the new task of Ukrainian soldiers who were asked to neutralize them. Upon this order, Ukrainian soldiers started to hunt down the Russian spies running in the streets one by one. Twenty Russian spies lost their lives in the city of Ovrich, thanks to the attention of the Ukrainian tank officer and the interaction of the soldiers. Thanks to this attention of the Ukrainian army officer, Putin's secret plan was foiled. Photos of the twenty neutralized spies were taken and sent to the Ukrainian general staff. From the photos, it was determined that these people were from Russian special forces teams. At the beginning of the war, the Russian army was harassing Ukraine with airstrikes. They were carrying out airstrikes on Ukrainian territory freely. The aim of these airstrikes by Russia was to spread fear and panic in Ukraine and to make the Ukrainian citizens living there leave their lands. Thus, the Russian army would not face any resistance from the people in the regions it occupied. Many cities in Ukraine were attacked for their energy and water supply infrastructure. The Russian army did so leaving the Ukrainian population living in the cities it attacked without electricity and water for long periods of time. Ukrainian state leader Volodymyr Zelensky said that these attacks are war crimes and that this situation needs to be intervened urgently. He requested air defense systems from the United States, their allies, to prevent these attacks. This request was accepted by the U.S. The U.S. administration soon sent air defense systems for the Ukrainian army to use. Zelensky and the Ukrainian army quickly deployed these air defense systems in the areas most attacked by the Russian army. However, the Russian army continued its air strikes, which were never ending. After a while, the Russian army stopped attacking with long-range Iskander missiles. Instead, they started attacking Ukrainian territory with unmanned warplanes that they procured from Iran. With the escalation of these attacks, Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky again appealed to his allies for help. The United States and Western countries have called on the Iranian leadership and asked Iran to stop providing military equipment to Russia, stating that the Russian army has committed numerous war crimes on the territory of Ukraine with Iranian-made unmanned warplanes. The U.S. leader said that Iran is a partner in this crime and that if Iran continues to support Russia, the Iranian state will be tried in international courts for this crime. In response to these statements by the United States, the Iranian government stated that they have suspended their relations with Russia for a while. However, the Iranian government does not stand by this and is still secretly supplying Russia with unmanned fighter jets. The U.S. administration has made this public, but Iranian officials have denied these allegations.
Iranian officials said that they had sold all large number of unmanned fighter jets to Russia before the start of the Ukraine-Russia war, but that they did not sell any unmanned fighter jets after the war began. When the Pentagon realized that Russia was not going to stop these airstrikes in any way, it agreed to provide long-range HIMARS missiles to the Ukrainian army, and all large number of HIMARS missiles were sent to Ukraine. The U.S. demanded a response with HIMARS missiles if Russia launched airstrikes again. This is exactly what happened. The Russian military soon launched an airstrike on the city of Dnipro. Responding to this attack with HIMARS missiles, the Ukrainian army launched a massive airstrike on the city of Belgorod located within the Russian borders. With this attack, the energy infrastructure facility in the city of Belgorod was destroyed. With the destruction of the facility, the city of Belgorod was left without electricity for a long time. With the successful attack, the Ukrainian army sent a message to Vladimir Putin and showed that they can organize airstrikes inside Russia's border if they want to, just like Russia does.